Hey, welcome back to Kiwi Tech, and today we're looking at Android. Let's go over the history of Android. So, in September 2008, Android was launched. Um, it's a, a incorporated HTML support in the browser, video playback, YouTube app, Google services like Gtalk, Gmail, Google Maps, and Google Sync. It was the first mobile operating system with pull-down notifications uh, using widgets and apps that can be downloaded via the Android market. Okay, and the next one to come around was Android 1.5, codenamed Cupcake. It was its second major release. Plenty of bug fixes, good features. Uh, Android's touchscreen-only phone was came out, which was the HTC Magic. Uh, widgets were introduced. Google started allowing third parties to produce widgets. Cupcake also enabled cut and paste. I know it seems a long time ago now. Then the next one, Android 1.6 came out September 2009, which was codenamed Donut. Uh, searches via text and voice was allowed. Adding contacts, music, dictionary, and the web was introduced into that method. Next came Android 2.0 and 2.1 Eclair. It was released in October 2009, bringing a revamped user interface with live wallpapers. Yeah, that seems a long time ago now. Android users were treated to a virtual keyboard. Uh, there was Bluetooth 2.1 support with faster transfers. And also video recording of MPEG-4 and 3GP formats were enabled. Uh, auto screen rotate was there and Picasa was also enabled. Then we have Android 2.2, 2, May 2010, called Froyo or Frozen Yogurt. Blew the competition away, it was very fast because of the new Java V8 engine or version 8 uh, JIT compiler, uh, which loaded apps even faster. Um, USB tethering, portable Wi-Fi hotspots were added, and this was pretty much a complete operating system. It enabled us to use our devices, and that was it. Next, Android 2.3 Gingerbread came out, and it was way different. Changed the user interface, looked cleaner, copy and paste could be done by word, not by all of selection. Um, battery management tools were enabled. And then in 2.3.7, which is the final version of Gingerbread, Google Wallet was introduced. Uh, near field communication to store cards, redeem promotions, etc. Next, Android 3, Honeycomb. Now, I didn't actually get to use this. Honeycomb was designed for tablets, everything on the UI with no need for physical buttons, so no back button or home button on the tablets, which is what tablets were for. So this is probably why I never got to use it. I never had a tablet until, well, Jelly Bean. Uh, so in the main view, you can see two bars at the top, an action bar, uh, individual apps and widgets, widgets at the bottom, system bar allowing notifications and soft navigation buttons were introduced. Next we have Ice Cream Sandwich Android 4.0, October 2011 and updated again in March 2012. Launcher was customizable and users could add both apps and widgets, which it had previously been separated, uh, from their home screens and drag it into panels. Um, default keys, you could change those. Uh, users could now use video and Google Talk, and it carried Face Lock, so Face Lock was introduced. Uh, one more thing, the task manager carried screenshots, and Chrome for Android was able from the Play Store at that time. Now, Android 4.1, codenamed Jellybean. This is June 2012, smeared with Butter, or Project Butter. Um, which enabled faster and a more response. Uh, zero lag was apparently implemented when opening apps and switching home panels, and it was kind of right. There was a little bit of lag, but significantly less than previous Android versions. Uh, syncing was enhanced, receiving notifications, gestures were introduced, uh, users could opt for text replies in response to missed calls, so, user, um, so Google Now was there. Um, Despite Jellybean having a 0.1 update, it allowed Google Now, which was massive. Uh, Google's version of Siri, which as we could see was far better. Holding down the home button and swiping to get predicted suggestions from what we've done, you get your own personal assistant basically. 
Google search was part of the implementation of Google Now as voice dictation was now available offline. And now we come to the last Google edition for 2013. Google 4.4 or KitKat has just been announced today. Uh, so we are unsure what features will be enabled in KitKat, but you can assure you that it's going to be fantastic. Um, I'm just going to leave you with a little clip from Nestle, which is the makers of KitKat, and they've done a little promotional video about Android, um, Android and or Google and Nestle seem to be working in conjunction here. So I guess it's going to benefit both. So this has been Kiwi Tech. Thanks for watching. I hope you haven't been annoyed by my cold too much, and I'll catch you next time. Every corner, every edge, every finger of every bar has been carefully considered and crafted to create a beautifully immersive and multi-sensory experience. And it really does taste as good as it looks. Because when we set out to create confectionery perfectionery by designing the perfect chocolate bar, we nailed it first time. With adjustable orientation, it works perfectly in portrait or landscape for a truly panoramic taste experience that will leave you up in the cloud. With global coverage, you can take it literally anywhere, even to work. At an extremely unequivocal 10 millimeters thick, one finger long and four fingers wide, KitKat 4.4 is the perfect second screen companion, compatible with all liquid accessories. With two megabytes, four megabytes, or a chunky bite option, no matter what kind of break you're looking for, we've got it covered.